of decision too long now you lost your lover's vision she's gone ride your horse across the river new dawn to where the gentle-hearted people belong Lovers, you know that I love you always will. That was Miss Cynthia Herring. She is a poetess and she's a songwriter and she was playing and singing her own composition. We enjoyed it, Cynthia. Thank you. Now, you are a product of Davenport, I believe. That's right. <coughs> I was born in Davenport and I grew up in Davenport, Burlington, and then graduated from Bettendorf High School. Mm -hmm. My family still lives here as well. And upon graduation from high school, where did you go? I went to college for four years in Cedar Falls and then I moved to the east and lived in Vermont in the woods of Vermont and in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I came back to Iowa about a year ago and I've been performing much of that time. Performing pretty much in the Midwest or one community? Pretty much, I'm based uh, in the Iowa City area and what I'm doing now is traveling mostly on the eastern side of Iowa up as far as Waterloo and then the Quad Cities, Ames, some in Minneapolis and uh, looks like New York, New York City. What do you do, play nightclubs? A variety of situations. Some uh, some colleges, some restaurant clubs. Um, in New York, it'd be more like showcase, where you're showcased as an artist, rather than background music for people eating dinner or something like that. All right, let's uh, hear a little bit about your New York experience. How did you happen to go there in the first place? Well, I had lived in Boston for some time, Cambridge, the Cambridge area, and so I knew that. If, uh, if you're a performing artist and you want to be professional, in other words, if I want to be recorded and to be touring and playing large concert halls, I really have to go out of the Midwest area somewhat. So New York City, to me, is a city I always felt very much at home in, and uh, I knew that's the place to go. So, I, in fact, I just got back um, a week ago, and uh, most of that time the trip was spent in auditions and taking tapes and N banging down doors, literally, you really have to, to push out there. It's uh, quite a bit different. And I, uh, I, luck I maybe lucked out, but I've got three engagements in September at very good clubs. They're showcase clubs, and uh, I'm excited about those. Really? Doing original work, which, you know, that's what I'm interested in. Uh, how long will these club dates be? Uh, one date, is, one club is on the Upper East Side. It's a place called JP's, and one night, one week, and then a one night the following week, and then I have a club in the Greenwich Village area where I'll be playing a whole week. That means like, say, Tuesday through Sunday. And one thing different about New York City clubs is you play, like for example here I'll play 9 to 1, or maybe 8 to 12, that's four hours by myself. Out there you play a half an hour, and that's it. And people pay $10 to hear you for half an hour. And you get scale. Well, you don't, I don't even know exactly what scale is out there. It must be different, but you get, you get quite a bit more than you would get here. <laughs> and you get exposure, which... When did you first discover that you had this talent for singing, for composing, for writing poetry? Uh, as far as the talent, I don't know. I've always loved doing it. Now, there's a difference between being commercially successful or able to support yourself at something, at an art form. Most people do it on the side. You really can't make it in the field of music or especially poetry but I've been doing it for I've been doing poetry for fifth for 12 years and music for three or four and uh, performing full-time music for about eight months 
I was doing it part-time before. Which comes doing. first, the words or the music? Well, I, wrote, I was a poet first, and I, I, there was a time when I wrote poetry s exclusively. I didn't play an instrument. So for me, it's always the words, and it's always a meaning. I'm really uh, conscious of what the song is saying and whether it communicates what I intend for it to communicate, whether it's a thought or a feeling, maybe a particular emotion. So I sometimes find disco and, and music that is rather monotonous, tedious, personally, because I'm really lyric conscious in my work. No, no, I have here a book of your poems, Songs for Solitude, and I was kind of interested in one whole page on which just a little bit is written, Sergei la beauté toujours, right? Which is always look for beauty? Yes, that's, that's real close. It's French for search for beauty forever. And uh, the reason I put that in there, because to me that's the theme of the book and of my work. I think you s hear so much music or so much art that's sort of depressing or mourning or moaning about something. And I feel that art for me is a way of finding oneself or finding happiness or it should be something positive and my goal of course is to search in art and in life for beautiful experiences making life a beautiful thing rather than isn't it rotten or something you know which which we can tend to do it's of the 12 free verse poems right that's right it's free uh, that you have in this book which is your favorite well, that's a good question. Uh, there's only one poem in there that's a song. There's actually the song. There's a poem in the book called "Song for Solitude" mm -hmm. that was set to music. So that poem is special because I often write poems that sometimes become songs, or have uh, poetry that have sort of a melody or music to them, and that one stands in both places at once. So it might be that one, but there's a poem in there. The last poem, "Mime." seems to just flow and it gets to the point at the end of the book where it en you end with a poem mime and if I could have a 13th poem it would be a blank page it would be nothing spoken it would be silence so maybe the last poem uh, would you poem. write music to that last page that that's beautiful yeah <laughs> that's that's it uh, this book is dedicated to and then you've uh, named several <laughs> oh, <no>. things <laughs> and people <coughs> one of them a hippopotamus and I don't oh. really recall a hippopotamus being mentioned in any of these no the hippopotamus wasn't mentioned in the book and oftentimes people notice the dedication and they say why did you I, I mentioned the lion the unicorn well the people can understand the lion because the lion is a very courageous animal and the unicorn of course represents like purity and sort of the a mystical beast and, and the hippo hippopotamus I put in strictly for humor because I thought if people read saw that in there they'd laugh and that's the only one that doesn't have a specific symbolic <laughs> relevance but it was for the humor. Well, you succeeded. It, it stands out I'll tell you that. <laughs> Incidentally I believe anyone interested may procure this book at the Quad City Arts Council that's office right. here in downtown Rock Island. That's right and the proceeds are going toward a, an arts foundation which I'm starting with the help of a, uh, a local lawyer and uh, the arts foundation will benefit a area artists as well as disadvantaged children. In other words, we'll have, a, we'll have workshops for kids who just aren't making it in traditional school. Mm -hmm. Artists will be used as well as kids who may not be working out. Uh, just briefly, I'm curious about your reaction when you first appeared in front of an audience professionally. Professionally? Okay, that, that means uh, the first time I appeared professionally was at the Boston Center for the Arts, and that was as a, po as a poet, but I sang one song. Now, that's in direct contrast to what I do now. I do almost all music, unless I'm invited to do a reading, which I do do poetry readings, but I was, very, I was horrified. I, I didn't have any confidence, really, but I pretended to have confidence, and I was new. At, at the Cynthia, I'm sorry, our time has run out. Ladies and gentlemen, a conversation with Miss Cynthia Herring, a poet and songwriter. And that's FYI This Week. Paul Liggett, thank you for watching. This has been FYI for your information a program devoted to Quad City area happenings and the people who make them happen. This has been a presentation of the WHBF-TV Community Affairs Departments.